So I've been, I've been sharing about encountering God and has just really been on my heart for a, a while and I shared some with you guys before. And, and the apostles been talking about crazy faith. So I want to talk about encountering God through crazy faith. Encountering God through crazy faith. Um, hmm. Whew, so much has been done already and said. Uh, Prophet Baruska was, was on point Amen. this morning. I thank God for my PAs. I, I really, really do. And uh, I was just talking to them earlier and was talking about uh, what Pastor was sharing about Jonathan and the armor bearer. Now here's a big ruckus going on, right? A war and all this stuff going on, right? And Jonathan and his armor bearer, they get away from the big crowd, the, the whole shebang that's going on, right? And Jonathan says to the armor bearer, said, uh, hey, we're going to approach them, and if they tell us to come up, we know God has given them to us. Right. If they don't say it, we know God didn't, and we're not going up against them. Right. And he said, God can save by many or by few. Yeah. God can save by many or by few. But this is, the, this is the key. The armor bearer's response was, whatever is in your heart to do, do it, and I'm with you. Brittany, right? Your name Brittany? What's your name? I was trying to remember. Yes, mm -hmm, the one saying me. Your name Brittany, right? Come on up here. Brittany Hughes? Huh? Hodges. Come on, because the Lord had me had you on my mind this morning. I'm so glad to see you here. See, I don't be playing with the Lord. I don't be playing with the Lord. I be listening to the Lord. Don't be scared. It's... It's more assurance to us yeah. Yeah. online. Amen. When God put your name in the, in the mouth of a man or woman of God, Amen. that's an assurance yeah. that God's got you. Yeah. He's got your front, he's got your back, he's got your sides. Amen. You couldn't be on my mind if you weren't on God's mind. So that's what God wants you to know today, that you are on his mind. Okay? And God told me to tell you, you don't have to be perfect. The one that's perfect is him. He's going to work perfectly through you, but you don't have to be perfect. Cut it off. Cut that thought of perfection off. Wherever it came from, get rid of it. You don't have to be perfect. He is perfect. And all you have to do is follow him. God has great things for you, and he wants you to know that. He wants everybody in here to know that. Look around. Look at these people in here. Yeah, they have nothing but love for you, and they want to see the best that God has for you. So I'm telling you, Miss Brittany, get ready. Get ready because some things are going to break open in your life. Some things are going to fall off and some people are going to fall off. Don't worry about it. 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 As a matter of fact, shout about it. Be happy about it because it's going to be better for you and for them. Okay? So God has great things coming for, for you. I just want to pray okay. right now. I'm going to put my hand on your head. 
And why I put my hand on your belly? Because the Bible says, out of the belly flows rivers of living water. It says, the issues of life come out the heart. And it's not talking about the heart beating up here. It's talking about the core of your being. So I'm laying my hands on the core of your being so that all that God has for you will come forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, everything that you planned and purpose for Brittany before the foundations of this world. Father, I declare and decree that they will come forth out of her. She will have the confidence in who you are and that you're working in her, Father. And Father, no longer will she think that she has to be perfect, but Lord, she will know all she has to do is follow you, the perfect one. And Father, I just decree and declare according to your word, Father, that doors are opening, things are breaking open for her, Father, and people are falling off from around her, Lord God, and you're surrounding her with new people, Father, with the same mind and the same heart and the same, oh, the same desires and like precious faith in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I give way to either one of y'all. Have y'all have something to say to us? Say it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. This is a life change. Life change for you, Brittany. Hallelujah. That's why I say Prophet Baruska was on it this morning. About the people you think you need and the people you trying to stay connected to and and all of that, just because they've been your friend for 15, 20, 50 years don't mean that that's the people you necessarily need to do what God is calling you to do at this time and at this point in your life. Hallelujah. Y'all just do this with me. That just means you're shaking off anything and anybody that don't need to be there. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Get them off. Uh, I, I got a couple of family members, you know, y'all know we live in Texas, right? It's two places that I've lived and that I've seen these in these little critters and ain't nothing you can do about them. Uh, in Texas and in Hawaii, y'all know them big old tree roaches? If you got shrubberies out around your house and stuff, they live in there and it, eventually they're going to find a way in your house, and especially when it rains like it's been doing these last few uh, weeks here, the heavy rain and stuff, they be running to find a way to get in the house, right? And in Hawaii, uh, it's the same thing. They're all over the place because there's so much shrubbery, so much greenery, and they, that's, where they, that's where they love to live. That's why they call them tree roaches. But I got some family members, they can't stand them. Uh, they, 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 I think they were uh, more uh, uh, upset by them than they are a snake. So act like you got one of them things on you. Get them people off of you like you would get that. Get it off. Get it off. Get it off. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, and you, you may not get to you may not get to kill that tree roach, but you glad when he go on about his business and he away from you, right? Mm -hmm. We're not trying to kill them folks. We just want them to get on about their business and get on away from us. Mm -hmm. That's helping somebody today. So, as <laughs> was talking about uh, Jonathan in the in the armor bearer, and he said, "Just do whatever's in your heart." He said, "I'm with you." And, and Baruska had no idea when she talking about the power of two. The reason why they could have the victory that they had, it was two, and they were together. Now, the armor bearer really is usually not trained as a big warrior. Okay? But that armor bearer said, whatever's in your heart to do, let, let's do it. Now, if the armor bearer had been scared and, oh, I don't know about that. I don't know if I want to do that with you. Uh, they wouldn't have had the victory. Okay? 
And as I was talking to my PAs this morning about that, something came up to me. The Lord reminded me of something in this little book right here. Okay. See this here? This is a powerful, powerful book right here. Not because I wrote it, but because God spoke it. Not because I wrote it, but because God spoke it. If you don't have it, you need to get it. And you can get it, you can get it right after service if you want one. But when I was talking to them about that, it brought up to me about the company you keep. And one of the nuggets in here is the company you keep. And it tells you about right and wrong people to have in your life. So you're trying to accomplish your goals and your dreams. You're trying to express that faith that you need to have in God, but you got people around you that keep on knocking that faith down. They keep on causing you to doubt what God is saying. Keeps on causing you not to believe that you can really accomplish what you need to accomplish. And so in this nugget, I talk about how to identify people that you need to release from your life. Those people, they're uncommitted to you and your purpose. So they cause you delays. I don't think you need to do that right now, you see. You might, you might need to wait a while. You think it's the right time? That's the kind of stuff they be saying. They're, they're undisciplined. They're easily distracted. So they can't help you because they're supposed to be going alongside with you and the, and the least little noise that happen, they, they off track. They, they looking away. Yeah. They're driven by appetite. By appetite, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's appetite. They damage your morals. You have every intention of doing what's right. They say, well, it ain't, it's okay to just do this. God know you. You're going to be all right. God will forgive you. Just come on. This, that's okay. These are people you need to get out of your life. Identify them and release them. Complacent. They devalue your gifts, your talents, and your calling. Yeah, girl, you really believe you, you're all that in a bag of chips? I believe I'm all that in a thousand bags of chips, if you want to say. But they devalue you and your gifts. They want to remind you of who you were, but they don't know you're not that anymore. Now, people you need to keep in your life, listen to this. People that are devoted to you and your purpose. They help you to meet deadlines. They say, okay, you say you're going to do this by so-and-so and so? Okay. I'm going to mark that down with you. I'm going to make sure I'm going to remind you. I'm going to be right there to help you to get that done by so-and-so time. That's the people you need. Yeah. Devoted. Dependable. They can be trusted, and they will consistently support you. Yeah. Yeah. They're there when you need them. Dutiful, they are willing to help, and they exhibit respect for you, your gifts, your talents, and your calling. They say, you can do it. You got it in you. You can make it happen. You're talented. And if they're part of a star, they say, you're successful. You're talented. You're anointed and you're radical. Uh, you're ready for anything. You're equal to anything through him who infuses you with inner strength. You're self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. Those are the kind of people you need around you. They're determined. They're firm in their belief in you. That no matter what they see, if they see you stumble, if they see you make a wrong choice, they still believe in you. They are motivated to succeed themselves, and they want to see you succeed. There's no competition with them. They want to see you do well. Those are the kind of people you need around you. So that's, that's who that, that armor bearer was like that with Jonathan. So because 
Not only did Jonathan have crazy faith, the armor bearer had crazy faith. So here you got two people with crazy faith. And what happens? They encounter God. How did they encounter God? They encountered God by God giving them the victory over their enemy. If we're going to encounter God, we have to exhibit crazy faith. Anybody that you see in the scripture who had an encounter with God, they exhibited crazy faith. Anybody. I just give you that. Okay, Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. She had an, here come the angel say, hey, let me tell you something. This is all my paraphrase now. Go and read it for yourself in Matthew and Luke, okay? Hey, let me tell you something. You're going to have a child. She said, what? Me? I never even been with a man. A man never touched me that way. He said, oh, don't worry about that. He said, the Spirit of God is going to overshadow you. And you're going to conceive, and that which you conceive is going to be born of God. Yeah. Listen to her crazy faith. Be it unto me according to your word. Wow. See, sometimes we think crazy faith, we got to jump, holler. <laughs> that that's crazy faith. That's not crazy faith. She says some simple words. Be it unto me according to your word. Yeah. And guess what happened? It happened. Now, she was already espoused to Joseph. And Mary didn't say, well, you know, I'm espousing Joseph. I, mm -mm, don't let that happen to me because then I'm not going to have this man already say he's going to marry me. And if that happened to me, then he's probably not going to want to marry me. See, crazy faith don't consider all them circumstances and all them situations. Crazy faith said, you spoke it, let it be unto me. That's an encounter with God, I'm telling you. What has God spoken to you that after he spoke it, you begin to reason? You begin to look at, okay, yeah, I can do it if this happened. I can do it if that happened. I can do it if this go this way. I can do it if this go that way. No, crazy faith just said, God, you said it. Let's go. It's in your heart, Lord. You've spoken it to me. I'm taking it in my heart. And Lord, we're going to do this thing. I'm talking about encountering God with crazy faith. What does Hebrews say? This Hebrews says that we understand that through faith, the things that we see were made not by things that we see, but things that are not seen, right? It also says that without faith, is it, a, it is impossible to please God. Because he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What did Jesus say? He said, I want to know when I return to the earth, will I find faith in the earth? What is God looking for? He's looking for your crazy faith. The Bible says that his eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth. Looking for those whose heart is perfect toward him, that he might show himself strong on their behalf. God is looking for you. Turn around and tell somebody, say, God is looking for you. And, and just, just do this. Just do this. Come on. Tell them, say, God is looking for you. And you know what he's looking for? He's looking for your crazy faith. He's looking for will you believe him. Right? What about Abraham. See, we are the children of Abraham. Why? Because Abraham had crazy faith. And Abraham had an encounter with God. How in the world are you a heathen out here? Your family worshiping everything under the sun and the sun too. And God said to you, get out from your father's house, from your kindred, and go to a place I'm going to show you. That took crazy faith. And Abraham went, and we know the story. It took crazy faith for God to say, I'm going to give you a son. 
And after 25 years, you get that son, and the same son that God gave you, he tell you, take him up to the mountain and sacrifice him. It took crazy faith. He got the wood for the sacrifice. He got the stuff to ignite the wood. He got the rope to tie up the sacrifice, and he took the sacrifice up there. But let me tell you what Abraham's crazy faith said. He told the servants, he said, y'all stay down here. Hmm. Some people, even though they with you, you don't need them with you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that. Yeah, that's right. ah, the Lord just gave me that on the spot. Some of the people that's with you don't necessarily need them with you. Them folks was with Abraham, but he didn't need them folks with him when he went to that mountain. I just need you to bring me this far, but you can't go up the mountain with me. You ain't going to be good on that mountain. A view from the top, baby, you ain't going to be good when we up there with the view from the top. Anybody know what I'm talking about, FOS? So he says, y'all stay down here. Huh, that's a whole nother something, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all stay down here. He said, me and the boy, we going up. And we going to sacrifice. But he said, we are coming back. He didn't say, I'm coming back. He said, we are coming back. That was crazy faith. Now, do you know what? When the sacrifice is made, the sacrifice don't get up. The sacrifice don't get up. When the sacrifice is dead, it's dead. <laughs> but Abraham said, me and the boy, we coming back. And if you read it, you know the rest of the story. When he got ready to sacrifice his son, God said, mm-mm, drop your hand. Say, look over there. <laughs> Get that ram out the thicket and sacrifice that ram to me. But he would have never known that. He would have never had that encounter with God if he hadn't believed God. There are encounters that God is waiting to have with each one of us. We just got to show him the faith. He's looking for the faith. He wants to have encounters with us. He's looking for the faith. And sometimes we think the encounter got to be something. It don't have to be it just have to be God speaking to you and you saying yes y'all heard this story I'm just going to tell a little bit of it right now y'all know about apostle and his toe his foot when, they, when he was in that hospital there was a little garden area I, I just left out the room. Doctors talking all this stuff. I left out that room and I went to that little garden. And guess what I did? I had an encounter with God. <laughs> and God didn't tell me this when I was in that garden. But when I walked back in that room, God had this come out of my mouth. They told me, oh, we need to amputate. We need to blah, blah, blah. I said, listen, doctor. My husband is leaving this hospital with everything he came in here with. That was crazy faith. That was crazy faith. That was crazy faith. An apostle have his whole foot today. What have you faced that you need to encounter God in? God is just looking for your faith in that situation. Do you have faith enough to believe God, to step out, to say what God is saying in this situation? I'm going to tell you another one. And some of y'all heard this before. I'm just going to give you the short version. I was working for a government entity. And at the time, I was having some health issues. And my doctor was trying to get them to work with us. 
and they didn't want to work with us. And so God told me, he said, uh, okay, it's time for you to go anyway. He said, write your resignation letter. Well, I wrote the resignation letter. Went and turned it in. God worked a miracle there. It's another whole long story. But anyway, the person there said, oh, I'm reading your letter. And, you know, if you have any, you have some uh, medical challenges and all that, then you can apply for a medical retirement. Not a medical leave. Did y'all hear the word I said? Medical retirement. So they say you want to. I said, I said yeah. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, here, fill out all the papers. So I filled out all the papers. While I was filling out the papers, she said, well, I'm gonna put in the system that you own the something something ever kind of leave it. That tell you how much I paid attention to that part. I said, ma'am. I said, no matter what happens, I'm never coming back here. That was crazy faith. That's crazy faith. You working a good job, you getting good pay, you got good benefits, da, 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 da. and they, these person trying to help you say, so I'm gonna save your job just in case this fall through, and you got nerve to tell them I ain't never coming back. That's crazy faith. Did all that, and in the meantime, I went to a revival meeting. Somebody we knew had invited us, they say that they had been listening to this person and everything and down at the arena. Some of y'all know where the arena is down there for 59 near Fondren and stuff. That's where the, the services were being held. Place was packed. But you know you can be in a place where place is packed and you can still have an individual encounter with God. You can come here. You can come here on Sundays at 930 and it be full. Uh, you can have an encounter with God. Your individual personal encounter. I hope that's what you have every time you walk in these doors. So ministering, signs, wonders, miracles happening in the place and then God speaks to me. He says, I want you to give an offering. Well, I had this little, what I thought was a little nest egg on the side because I know I'm not going back to that job. So I got this little nest egg over here that's going to help me to tide me over. Don't, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Online, you know what I'm talking about too. Don't be acting like that. Don't be making those faces because y'all know what I'm talking about. It's, it's going to tide me over until, hmm, right? The Lord says, give it all. Give it all. I started just crying. I wasn't crying because I didn't want to give it. I was crying because I was having an encounter with God. I just started, I mean, just weeping, tears just dropping down. And, and, I, and I was sitting there, and I don't even know what section or area, but the, the arena is big. And so I just got up, and I went down there like. <laughs> and I said, uh, I want to give. I said, I, I don't have the money, but I want to be able to give it. And, uh, and they said, okay, just do this, this, and this. Do you know what? As soon as the bank opened, this was on a Friday night, I think, or Saturday or something. As soon as the bank opened, I didn't, I didn't, uh, Lord Jesus, help me. I didn't hesitate. Oh, Lord, you want me to say that? Oh, my goodness. I did like my daddy say. I hauled ass. <laughs> down to the bank. I got that money and I sent it in. See, not only you can't just have crazy faith and then you don't follow through. You don't make a vow to God and then don't pay the vow. That's what the Bible says. It's better for you not to even vow anything than a vow and not to pay. And I wasn't playing with God. I don't play with God. So I did just that. This was in October. Come February, I got a letter saying to me that the retirement was approved. 
and I was getting back pay from April all the way to February. The back pay that I got was three times the offering that I sold. Come on, y'all. I'm talking about crazy faith. I'm talking about encountering God. See, a lot of times God is speaking to you about giving something. And you thinking about this, your little nest egg over here. And you got to do this and this and this with it. And it's going to carry you over. Ain't nothing going to carry you over but God. When I think back on it, that little money would have been gone so fast. Yeah. But I tell you what, from that time on, that was 1985. And I got it now, Jay. That's 38 years ago. I usually ask Jay to calculate for me right quick. 38 years ago, ever since that time, y'all listen to me real good, because God is speaking to some of y'all, and y'all been wanting an encounter with God, but you won't do what God say. You won't exercise that crazy faith to have that encounter. Yeah. 38 years, I've been getting a check every month. 38 years, I've had my medical insurance. 38 years, I've had my life insurance. When I turned age 60, they sent me a letter. They say, you have lifetime benefits. So until I get 120, they're going to be doing the same thing they're doing now. Y'all heard what I said. Till I get when? 120. And I'm going to connect the two things which I'm going to connect the dots. When Apostle had that foot, foot issue, it was 2004. It started November of 2004. Okay. Apostle was no longer working for the entity that he was working for before. He was full-time in the ministry. Ministry didn't have no medical insurance for him because of my crazy faith, listening to God, obeying God, giving, you can't tell me that that offering did not trigger a yes from them people. Uh, nobody in this world could tell me that. Mm-mm. Because of that, we had insurance. Everything that he needed for all of that was paid by the insurance. Oh, Jesus. The diagnosis, he had a diabetes for 26 years. Every doctor's appointment, every medicine, every blah, 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 was all paid by the insurance. In 2012, he needed a, a, a transplant. He decided to have a kidney transplant. My daughter was the donor. The insurance paid for him and her, everything they needed to be tested, blah, 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 the surgery, and the da, 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 da. Just if I just talk about medical alone, I'm sure it's been a million dollars or more that have come out of that one obeying God, that one encounter with God. Somebody need to hear me today. Somebody need to hear me today because God is speaking to you about some things and you have not done those things. All he wants you to do is walk in faith. Just believe him. I didn't know what was going to happen. But I'm telling you what. We never sat in the dark. We never went homeless. We never were hungry. My daughter said she ate ramen noodles. But she liked them ramen noodles. That's why she ate them. So what I'm telling you, some of you, God is just, come here, come here, Pastor King. Some of you, God has just been doing this. St stand there. Like this. Some of you, God just been doing this to you. How long, how long does God have to nudge you? How long before you exercise that crazy faith? And have that encounter with God. How long? He's long suffering. But I know even God get tired of telling you the same thing over and over and over and over again. What am I doing today? I'm begging you. I'm begging you to exercise that crazy faith. And have that encounter with God. It's not going to be anything for you but blessing. Nothing. Whatever you're trying to hold on to, whether it's money, whether it's a house, whether it's a car, 
whether it's people, whether it's some investment, you need to listen to God because you don't know what God has in store for you from that. Because there's nobody like him. Nobody could have done for me what God did and what God is still doing. Ain't nobody like him. Nobody like him. This is my last one. We were living in Kingwood. In 2014, we moved out of Kingwood. We moved back into our home in Summerwood. In 2017, what happened in Houston? What happened? I don't hear y'all. Y'all act like y'all don't remember. Harvey happened. What happened in Kingwood? Flooded. Do you know the houses in King? Our house was built up probably, uh, the, the foundation was probably high as this stage or higher. But still, six feet of water got into that house in Kingwood. We were gone. We were gone. I didn't want to leave that house when I left, but I knew God was telling us to go. If we had been in that house, we would have been flooded. Apostle cannot be in any type of uh, water other than taking a bath and a shower. You know that when that water rising from the, from the San Jacinto River and all that is full of all kind of bacteria and, and murk and that, what would we have done? Because that flood, when they let them things, it came in the night, people were get, trying to get out of there in the night. Look at God. You got to have crazy faith. There was crazy for us to leave a 5,000 square foot house, over 5,000 square feet, and go to a 3,000 square foot house. Yeah. That would have been crazy to some people. They say, you're going backwards. We weren't going backwards. We were going forward. Yeah. Yeah. You got to have that crazy faith and encounter God. Yeah. No matter what. You are ready for anything. And you are equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into you. You are self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And I'm encouraging you to exercise crazy faith and watch the encounter that you have with God. Amen? Stand to your feet just for a moment. We just want to thank God for this word and we want to seal you. Open your mouth and seal this word in your heart so that you can experience God. It's good, to, it's good to, to know that Abraham and Mary and Jonathan and all of them, yes. Peter and John. Yes, hallelujah. But it's better when you can experience it for yourself. Yes. And when you can hear people that's among you, people that you know, and see how they stood in faith. If it's one thing, praise. I praise family and praise here. And anybody associated with praise. It's one thing you can say about Apostle Patrick T. Randolph. He has faith in God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you just thank God that you hear his voice. You listen for God and you listen to God. You listen for God to see what God is saying, and you listen to God means you obey what God is saying. You know, when your parents say, listen to me, they're not just telling you, hear with your ears. They're telling you, do what they say. So God is telling us to obey him. Ecclesiastes says it this way. He said, hear the conclusion of the matter. The whole duty of man is to fear God and keep his commandments. I say love God and do what God tells you to do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we know that the faith we live by is the faith of the Son of God. Yeah. Jesus Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. So, Father, we're not dependent on our faith. We're depending on his faith working in us and through us. And Father, because of that faith, we know that we have constant encounters with you, God. 
Thank you, Lord. I pray for each person under the sound of my voice right here today, Father, and anyone who will hear my voice, even in rebroadcast, media broadcast, whatever way that they hear the voice of this message. Father, I pray now that they will exercise crazy faith and that they have encounters after encounters after encounters with you, O oh God. And they will be assured of your voice, Father, and obey your voice in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen.